And I'll say that this is one of the stranger, but potentially more reliable locking mechanisms I've ever seen on a pocket knife. And no, I'm not talking about the Atlas lock on the Cold Steel Mayhem. Yes, I did get one in rotation. This thing is insane. This thing is insane. Video coming soon on this. I know a couple of you have been asking about it. Yes, I do have one. And yes, it's going to be a bananas type of video. So coming real soon. That's not a competitive option. That's not even on the same planet as the Revolt Knives Reflex. The Reflex Pocket Knife with the just one of the weirdest, uniquest, but as I stated, strongest, potentially most reliable locks I've ever seen. What's up everybody? I'm Aaron. This is Gideon's Tactical. Welcome back to another blade review. Now, I don't, I've never even heard of revolt knives. You may find at the end of this video, this knife to be revolting. I'm not sure. I'm still on the fence with some aspects of it. Some are super unique and some are just like, are we looking for, are we creating solutions to problems that don't exist? Well, let's find out together. Now, revolt knives, this reflex model, uh, I just bought it on a whim, like over six months ago, carried this knife from time to time, and have just now gotten around to actually creating the content for this knife. Now, let's just hit some basic specs before we get into this really, they don't even have a name for it. It's just called a frame lock, which I guess it kind of is a frame lock because it is part of the frame of the body, but we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, the blade is 3.2 inches blade length, full flat grind, one of the like most exquisitely executed drop point. I mean, you can't get more simple, but more capable than that drop point on VG10 steel. 90 degree spine, excellent. I've used it a bunch. It's a great slicer. Reminds me a lot of some Spyderco knives that I have, just on how easy it is to go through man-made material, just eat it all up, food prep, it's a dream and be able to do a little bit of woodworking if you needed to. It just really does well in VG10, you know, is, is a good, I would say medium grade now stainless steel. It used to be a premium back in the day. So that's what the, is on the blade. The overall knife, it weighs in at 3.7 ounces with a four, I'll say 4.2 inch handle. And it's like 0 0.45 on the thickness. Anodized 6061 aluminum with this bronze coating on it. And the, it is rounded. It kind of looks squared and blocky. It, the, the handles are very contoured. Even the edges have been have been rounded very, very well. And it will fill my large size hand without any problem there. Feels good. It's an ambidextrous with matching thumb studs. Now I will hit it right out of the gate. The, this pocket clip is not ideal. It is ambidextrous. You can unscrew it, swap it, put it on the other side, but it, it raises itself up pretty high. The ergonomics, ergonomically, are, are pretty warm to the touch and actually feel really good. No jimping anywhere on it. So just very organic, but you definitely feel in that pocket clip a little bit. It would have been better to have just either like a loop over or even just kind of a, a less gradual, I guess, pocket clip. Not the end of the world, but that is a, a hot spot where the rest of the knife is very warm to the touch. Now comes in the locking mechanism, which is just in the in the action. So I guess we'll get to the action because we have four pivot points. One, two, three, four, to make this whole tool work and lock properly. Now we bring it in. We got great tip recession into the handle there. Feels good for, it's kind of wide on the back, but I've never, it never caused any like undo real estate usage. I mean, it's not any different than say an 8010 from Cold Steel. Hopefully you guys can see that there, there we go. So um, in that regard, I'm not seeing a linear hole. Now, the first thing also, it is not a fidget friendly knife. If you are into fidgety tools, not for you, don't, you're not gonna like this. You, you got the thumb stud, that's ambidextrous. You flick it, I can never fully open it with one swing, one motion doesn't happen because the bar moves, you can see there, wee, and then you're, it's hitting your hand every time. So you can then do a secondary motion and squeeze, and that completes the transition to lock mode, if you will. Uh, I don't tend to do that. What I tend to do is one motion like this. Open, my hand kind of grabs it, then I transition and I squeeze, and that locks it into place, and now we're done. Now, this is, I've pounded on the spine, I've done all kinds of stuff, 
What's happening is that the energy of this portion right here, this I'm hopefully I'm using the right terminology here. Like to me, it's like a torsion bar. The bar is now sending that energy back to this portion right here that clicks into place. And I have never been able to get it to overcome this. And on top of that, when you're holding the tool, you're squeezing that bar down even more. Now it's locked and you actually have to use two hands to disconnect and get it to overcome that initial torsion, again, the, the leverage pushing down on it to then close manually. So you can't close this one handed. It's I've tried so many times. So again, I'm squeezing right here like that. Boom, I'm in place. I'm using the tool. I can't, it's not going to overcome this but, and push up over that and overcome the pressure of my hand all simultaneously. I just can't do it. And even when I'm not pressing down on there, the energy is just going straight into the back of the handle, not causing it to overcome the two, I guess, I guess leverage points that keep it in place. But that means that it, because it clicks and it has these two little milling points right there, almost like a reverse nail neck, if you will, which means even if I go like this, I mean, I can't get it to release. I mean, it has to be two handed. I've never been able to do it one handed. So what you got to do is use your other hand back here, pull. Now that blades like that, then you close the blade. So that part, if everything else, it would actually be really cool and intuitive uh, over time. You know, you're like, whoa, open, get it passed and then close and you're good to go. But the closing, because you got to do it like this, I don't know that that to me, that's a real big stall out for me and just overall carryability. So I have used it a few times, carried it, you know, for like a couple of weeks while I was testing it over the course of the last six months. But it, it's not a smooth, if you will, action, even those bronze washers everywhere on it, which is great. Um, it's going to run you about 80 bucks made in China. The fit and finish seems great. I can't seem to find a problem with it. The grind angles are great. You know, they're all that stuff. It's just so weird. And I, the only place that I can find it is on Amazon. So I will have links in the description below this video. If this design does make sense for you, you want to just try out something super interesting and different. Uh, those will be provided for you guys below. Always appreciate it. Regardless of this tool or other tools in general, when it does come time to make a purchase using those links, always appreciate it. Helps me literally buy weird stuff like this so we can test out and see what it does. So, ergonomics, good blade shape materials, and particularly for that price, if it was just a normal, more functional, you know, I mean, I think of where, do I have it around here? Yeah, the, I mean, I'm thinking of the um, Civivi uh, Conspirator, you know, push button, 80 bucks, 80 bucks, VG10, Nitro V, you know, I mean, there's a lot in that price range. It's just like the very, very, very strong, very unique profile, but again, kind of looking for a a, a solution to a problem that I don't think necessarily exists. And in so doing kind of makes it a really weird, odd action. They have a few other models, the Revolt line that you could look at as well, or excuse me, yes, right? That's the reflex. <laughs> the Revolt line of knives that you could look at. If, I think they have one or two other models that you, if you're interested in. But I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts, your comments, and just your take. So, so interesting. On the reflex from Revolt knives, let me know if this was revolting to you or you really kind of dig it. I want to know from you guys. Always appreciate you coming over today, spending some time, being entertained and getting some information today. Appreciate you guys so much. Check out the other video popping up and subscribe if you haven't yet. Until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.